Okay, so I'm Clive Wilson, author of Designing the Purposeful Organization. I wrote Designing the Purposeful Organization for two principal reasons. First of all, organizations are what supplies nearly all the services that make our lives what they are. And, and secondly, most of us work in organizations as part of our employment. So if you think about it, we put those two together, then if we can have the best service that we possibly can in our lives, and the most meaningful work, it really inspires me to write a book about it. And the book hinges around the subject of purpose. And the logic is that everything in life has a purpose. Organisations have their purpose, so do the teams that make up the organisations and the people that work there. And chapter one really dives into that and talks about uh, how purpose can be seen through different lenses. And it's important to see the organisation through the lens of the shareholder, the customer, the member of staff, the managers that work there and so on. And chapter two uh, talks about where the organisation is going. So if purpose is why we're in business, then chapter two is about where that business is heading, no matter what the organisation is. What are the compelling time horizons? What does the world look like when we get there? Uh, and what does it look like through the lenses of all the different people that are playing a part? And then chapter three is about engagement. So if you think about it, a vision held in the C-suite or in the chief executive's drawer actually doesn't do a blind bit of good. That vision has to come alive and it has to be part of everybody. And the vision isn't the domain of the leaders in the organisation solely. It's also the domain of everybody. And it's about how we engage to bring that to life and to use it to drive the purpose of the organisation. So chapter four is about the structures that come out of that. And if you think about it, the bigger an organization gets, and just think about the size of some of our global corporates, um, the bigger an organization gets, the more we need structure to actually make sure that we're running in an efficient manner. And so that chapter is really all about how do we do that? And particularly when we've got people halfway around the world in different time zones and so on and so forth. But structure isn't everything, so now we need to also look at the character of our organisation. And the reason I use the word character is because uh, whilst most organisations talk about their culture, this has to apply to us, to individuals, and we don't talk about my culture, we talk about my character. And there's actually something very powerful about an organisation that has character. And how do we make sure that that character is aligned with the purpose, the vision, and so on and so forth. And we describe all sorts of techniques and methodologies to do that. And then we start to look at the outputs of the purpose of the organisation. So first of all, what are the results? And, and results are really our mechanism for tracking our journey to the vision that we decided, which is the playing out of purpose. So if we want to know what to measure, we should really look into the vision of our organisation uh, and work out how we measure the, the things that we're expecting to be outcomes. Uh, and we talk about key performance indicators, balanced scorecards, but there's a lot more to it than that. Um, but results aren't everything. Uh, and actually results are not what motivates people. I hear a lot of chief executives talking about being results driven, but actually there are very few people that are motivated by results. They're actually motivated by a feeling, by a sense of success. So success is both an outcome and it's a feeling. And the book talks about how that plays out at a personal level, but even more powerfully, how that plays out, for example, at a team level. And team success doesn't come by accident. You know, leaders have to get their people together, talk about what success means to each of them, uh, and to allow a feeling at the team level to grow out of that dialogue. Uh, and then finally, the eighth chapter is all about talent. You know, what do people bring to that organisation? And how can we make sure that we play to the strengths of everybody that's in our organisation? Uh, and we use a, a sequence that uh, we call talent liberation, recognise, value, develop and use. So it's about recognising the talent that everybody brings. It's about understanding how that will add value in the context of the organisation. It's about developing it so that a talent becomes a strength. And it's about putting it to use so that people are playing to their strengths most of the time that they're at work. And then finally, chapter nine is about looking ahead. So now that we've got our organisation focused, what does that mean for the rest of the world and where's the world heading? So I hope you enjoy the book.